Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about Logic Pro's control bar display area and a lot of the features within it. We're also going to be talking about key commands. This area, this strip at the top of Logic's main window is called the control bar display. And this is how the LCBC template looks. And maybe you don't like this. Maybe this is a little too cluttered or you want to change some of the controls in here. The easiest way to do that is to go to this drop down menu here. I'm going to choose Customize Control Bar and Display. And now I can select or deselect uh, the options I want to have viewed in the Control Bar display. Over here on the left uh, is the Quick Help button. All you have to do is hover over something. If you're not sure what it is, it'll tell you what it is and what it does. This is a Edit button for opening up some options to edit regions and a few other things. This is going to open up our mixer or we can press X on our computer keyboard to open the mixer below. And this is where you can see all the channel strips which, which are attached to each track. So you can see how the horizontal and vertical views are related here. When I select, uh, say, count in the main window, it's going to also select, select count in the mixer. Same here with reference. It's going to select that down here. So uh, this mixer layout is just like a traditional mixing board, which most people prefer for mixing lots of tracks and seeing them all together at once. This button here is for record. So if I have a track selected, in this case it's an audio track, and I have an input selected, I can press it and it'll start recording. And I press space, space bar to stop. I can also use the key command R to record as well. So this is probably a good time to start talking a little bit more about key commands, which are also known as keyboard shortcuts, and I'm sure you're familiar with these. So it's really probably best practice to get into the habit, once you start learning the program, of learning the key commands rather than having to move your mouse up to something like the control bar display to select an option in Logic or even to like hunt through menus here. Key commands will definitely make your workflow more efficient. So what's great about Logic is that you can actually adjust the key commands and customize them to how you want to work. So I can press uh, Option K to open up the key command uh, box here. And this will allow me to search key commands and also change them. So if I wanted to know the record key command, I can type it here in the top right. And it will show me all the key commands related to the word record. And you can see that the R is record. And so let's say I wanted to change that, though, to something different. I can just press Delete and then press Learn by Key Label. Now Logic is waiting for me to press in something on my computer keyboard. So let's, uh, let's say I wanted to make record, let's say, uh, Control-Shift-Backslash. Uh, Not sure why you'd want that, but... Um, you can see now that that is the new key command. And then I just deselect Learn by Key Label. This button here is going to turn on Cycle. And Cycle is just like Ableton Live's loop feature in Ableton Live's Arrange window. So if I turn that on and I press Play, it's going to loop or cycle this area of the main window. So it's going to be highlighted here in the Time Ruler. And I can change the length of that as well. And C is the key command to turn that on and off. Let me show you a handy thing you can do with a cycle range. Let's say you want to know the length of your song. And you can see this, this is something I do because I start my song, my final song, somewhere in the middle of the time ruler here. I'm starting at measure 90. And that's just the way I work. I like to have this open area in the beginning for scratch ideas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn cycle range on. And then I'm going to extend it to the end. You can see I'm going from marker A1 to B3. And then the other thing you're going to want to make sure you have is this secondary ruler on, which is this strip up here. And if you don't have that on, you're going to press Control Option Command R. It's in the LCBC template, but I don't think it's in the normal logic templates. So press that key command to turn it on. Then I'm going to select here in the cycle range and click with my mouse. And then right under the length, you can see the time of that cycle range at a minute and two seconds. 
this area here is going to show me the time of where the playhead is in my song. The top number is going to show me hours, minutes, seconds, and then milliseconds. And you'll notice here if I take my playhead to one, it's going to start on one hour. So just be aware of that. Don't be confused by that. That's because of a SMPTE specification, which is used in syncing sound to film. The bottom numbers here are going to show me the first number is measure, then beat, and then the third number is subdivision. So here it's, I think, giving me a 16th note. And then the last number is Logic's own proprietary division of a beat, and that's called a tick. So with a tick and with milliseconds, you're able to slide regions to a very fine detail here on Logic's main window. Here we have our tempo. Here's our time signature and our key signature. And I can just double click on these and change them for the whole song. Now I can also change them at a certain point in the song. And to do that, so let's go back to 72 here. So let's say if I put my playhead position here at 9, I wanted a tempo change from 72 to 103. I'm just going to open up this uh, event list and go to tempo and say plus. And now right here I can change the tempo to 103. And I can do that same process for changing the time signature as well. Here, Logic is going to show me the MIDI information that's going into the computer and out of the computer. So if I play individual notes here on my keyboard, you can see it's going to show me the MIDI note number and the velocity on the right. And it can also show me what type of chord I'm playing if I'm playing chords. So I think that can be very helpful too. I'm going to skip some of these areas for now and move over to Logic's built-in metronome. So if you don't have the LCBC template or you want to use Logic's metronome, you can do that. If I turn it on and press play, you'll hear the, the sound from Logic's metronome. And a lot of these buttons actually have, you can see this little arrow here, it's, it's actually a drop-down menu for more features for the metronome. So if I press control, click, you can see some of these other features. So right now it's on click while playing. I'd probably rather have click while recording, so I'm going to take that off and then add click while recording. And this button here is going to give me a count in. So right now it's four beats. And if I wanted to start recording here at measure 22, but I still wanted a count in so that I can sort of prepare with the tempo and know exactly when to come in. And so that my audio file region will start right at 22, I can use this count on. So I'm going to press R. It's going to give me a count in. And then start recording. This is an easy access volume fader for Logic's main output. And if I open up the mixer, take a look at this master fader here, you can see that they're linked. So I do have a master fader knob for my audio interface, a physical knob, but sometimes it's easier for me to turn this down. I'm usually turning it down than turning it up. Just one thing to remember when you're going to export out of Logic and create your final song file or you're exporting a sample, just make sure that this fader is at 0 dB. And a quick tip on how to get faders to 0 dB or even pan knobs to center position is to press Option and then click on the fader or the pan knob. This button opens up the list editors, and I showed you earlier how to create a tempo change in the middle of the song or do the same with the time signature. Let's talk about markers real quick. Markers are a way to have a visual cue for where you are in a song arrangement, and they show up in these boxes right underneath the time ruler. So I can delete them and create them over here. So let's say at measure 37, I'm going to put the uh, playhead there at measure 37, press plus, and then I can rename it down here as the verse. I can also create them right in the main window without having the list editor opening. Let's say at measure 41, I wanted to put a course there. So the key command to create a marker is option apostrophe, 
and I can double click right in the marker area and name it from there. This button opens up the notepad and you can have notes for the full project or just for individual tracks. And this button opens up the loop browser and I'll talk more about this in a later video. When you got Logic and downloaded it, you also ended up downloading hundreds of sounds and hundreds of audio files and MIDI files that will go in this loop browser. And they're in different styles, in different uh, instruments, different key signatures and tempos. And I can audition them by clicking on them. And I can drag them right from the browser onto an audio track or a MIDI track. In this case, it's an audio loop. And this last button is for the media browser or file browser. The first tab project includes all the audio files that are within my project. So you can see the count offs and the click sound. And media in all files include all the different directories and ways you can search for files that are on my main hard drive of my computer and all external drives attached to my computer. So I can search for and drag in audio or MIDI files onto the main window. Well, just as a reminder, the Logic project I used in this video and that I'll be using in future videos are Click Track and Count Off Template. Uh, that's in the YouTube information below, so check that out. It's a free Dropbox download link. I just want to say thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.